turnovers again? Uh, just what's, what's sticking with you as far as what you saw tonight in regards to that? Yeah, I mean, we got to be better. I mean, I, I'll start by saying that they fouled the shit out of Kevin Durant all night. Yeah, whether he has the ball, okay, and he's getting stripped three or four, maybe five times, okay, and every time he tries to get open, he's being held, you know, which is um, you know, something I really want the league to look at. Um, but that that's where it starts with the turnover problems. But, you know, we've had issues with it throughout the year, you know, and uh, this team's number one in the league enforcing turnovers. We didn't handle their, their pressure well enough and, um, you know, their length. And you know, recognizing our length when we try to try to touch the paint, so um, you know it was costly. You lost guys. Uh, one of the big run there in the third. What do you feel like led to that? Was it just a matter of not turning it over, or was it more? Yeah, we stopped fouling. Um, we stopped forcing. You know, I, I think uh, you know we, we're. I was trying to you know so hard to, to get Kevin involved. You know, and sometimes you know uh, you know we can try to force force the action rather than just let the game come. You know, when we started just opening things up, you know, play spread, spread, pick and roll, let the blender happen, let the ball start moving around. You know, that's when uh, that that was the best way tonight to get to get, to get kept free because, you know, obviously they were they were grabbing and holding, and then, and then they were double teaming every one of his touches. You know, if he came out pick and roll, came out, you know, got the ball in the post or ISO situation, they came right away. So, um, you know, that was the best the best way to get him free. And uh, you know, I don't cre credit Bradley Beal during that stretch. You know, he was exceptional touching the paint, and then Saban came in and kind of played the same role, you know, when we had to take Brad out. Um, but playing without fouling on the other end, you know, and not taking the ball out of the net or, or, or starting at the free throw line. The other thing I had was um, Bradley also got that balance of the range, he got it going, you take him out. When you calculate minutes in your head, okay, I think I got four more points, I need to take him out and put him back in later. Yeah, it's one of my least favorite things to do uh, as a coach is to coach a star player through minutes restriction, you know, because he wants to be out there. I want him to be out there. We have to be mindful, you know, that he doesn't, you know, what, what, what we do, if we do anything irresponsible, then that costs us two or three more weeks. Like you, you don't want to do that. Like I'm not mad at the restriction. I think it's the right thing to do, but um, it's very frustrating coach through. What's the process of either having to leave look at the balance situation with Durant? There's a portal. You enter the, the clips in, um, to that and um, there's a text um, process you know where you text a review after each game you know you put it in there and you're gonna phone call you know you have phone calls with some of the league officials as well and that stretch where the thunder kind of made their run in the fourth quarter you had to bring brad and Nurk out at the same time is that just kind of a byproduct of working through the minutes restriction? press bodies yeah i mean minutes restriction with with brad for sure and then um you know keeping keeping Nurk fresh he looked like he was out of gas Himself incredible, incredible. I mean, the, the loss aside, if you just look at uh, you know a thirty-one rebound night at any point in in, in the NBA in NBA history, honestly, is just an incredible performance. Obviously, the best in, in Phoenix Suns history. Uh, he is a beast on the defensive board. I think he's the best defensive rebounder in the game. And you know, when he gets a lot of offensive rebounds like like he did tonight, you know, the the, the home grid matchup is one that is very challenging to defend because of his offensive skill set. Um, you know, but at least at this point early early in his career or early in their tenure, you know, we felt like we could hurt them on the boards and we wound Nurk up and he was exceptional there. When you when you put in perspective that Wilt averaged thirty rebounds in a series, pretty amazing. Now Wilt's in his own class. Yeah, we have missed it. I mean, he's so dynamic, touching the paint, and um, he was great. You know, shooting the basketball from from the perimeter, uh, really creating the chain reactions that you know puts us at our best. You know, takes best advantage of of the, the shooting that we have on the floor. Um, so he keeps getting a little bit stronger. You know, last night, tonight. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, we can play him even more against Denver. Oh, for sure. I mean, you put Devin Booker out, Booker out there. I mean, everybody can see how good we can be if we're whole. Coach, coaching this team and the, the, the low, the peaks and valleys, okay, there's a stretch of guys just not in it. Then all of a sudden, finally going as a coach, how, how do you balance not getting frustrated with that, but then knowing that what you got the capable of doing and not doing that in certain stretches? Yeah, I mean, you stay positive, but, you're, you know, every group I've ever coached needs to be challenged. You know what I mean? So, 
um, you know, you, you see the guys challenging themselves, which was great to, you know, to see tonight. Our guys were, uh, you know, leading uh, from the bench, you know, when, when we were having stretches where we weren't playing at our best. And then, you know, I've got to challenge them as well, you know, which happened as well. Um, you know, we start the game strong. We know what we're capable of against that group. Okay, we go through some lulls. And, uh, you know, when you see them not playing at their best, you got to wind them up. Sure. We're all in this fight together. Uh, Frank, what has David Roddy shown you in practices so far, and what do you think of his couple minutes tonight? Tough-minded dude. You know, I was excited to see him out there in some meaningful minutes. Um, you know, we know he's a he's a, de a developing shooter, uh, but we have confidence in his shot. And, you know, he's he's guarded some of the best guys. He, he was a rotational player in the playoffs for Memphis last year. You know, so he's somebody that can help us. I'm wondering about Jalen and what he's done I mean, shot making, you know, first and foremost, in all ways, right? If you're going to ISO him, he can he can rise up. He can get to the basket off the balance. You can play him in pick and roll. You can play him off pin downs. And, um, you know, he's a great uh, backside attacker when Shea gets his double teams. Like Josh, uh, the late scratch, what was going on? I mean, I noticed that hip. Is that something that was bothering him? Yeah, he's, it's something he, he felt a little bit this morning. Didn't think it was going to be a problem until he started uh, pre pregame shooting. And it was, it was really grabbing him. And, um, you know, it was clear he couldn't go. So you yesterday, last one, you said that uh, the turnovers were an effect of extra passes. You know, you said that kind of tonight where they were throwing the ball into, into the stands and, you know, people were in position. Is, is there a, a problem here where people knowing where they're supposed to be on the floor and so balls are going to spots and nobody's there? No, we just got to make better passes.